it's been a long time so I just wanted to show you something I did on the weekend um, I made this cage liner now my sewing skills aren't great they really aren't but as you can see it's like hidden with all the stuff on top so it's okay this has just got like llamas on the one side and this pink pattern on the other side and yes I put newspaper underneath it even though this has got a plastic waterproofing inside I just do that anyway and put it on top and then that's also partially why we have the tiles on top so that they don't pull the um, cage liner back and then chew with the newspaper because obviously that wouldn't be good for them because um, ingesting paper isn't good for chinchillas it expands in their stomach and that can cause blockages so that's bubbles and it's her cage don't mind the stuff on the cage and that's foxy yelling hey bubbles So I apologize if the video quality and the audio isn't good. I'm filming on my phone because I can't find my memory card for my camera. So this is what's going on. So this is a liner that I previously made and this is actually just fleece sewed, you know, together there's nothing inside. So that's what I've previously done. And then, okay, this is just to show you what the fabric looks like of that liner in Bubbles Cage already because you couldn't really see so there's what that looks like and I need to make like a hammock or something out of this and this is biscuit hello <laughs> normally we let her outside um, during the day but it's cold and raining so she's inside for the day and then she loves cuddles and head scratches and then the reason I have this here to show you, this is the boys' um, double hammock that they have. And it's chewed, that yes, well loved. Um, Binks especially loves sleeping inside. And yeah, this was just turned inside out so that I could see kind of how to make this. Um, and then it's just, just the two squares and then you sew the one on diagonally, just like that. Yes, biscuit. Demonstrate. Don't chew it, thank you. And then I've got this liner that I sewed <laughs> for the boys. Um, it's reversible. I try to see if the the hello, if the waterproofing had a definite like top and bottom, but it didn't seem like it does have. So I think it's just you know fine to be reversible. And then you've got the two colors for the boys. Calm down, you, you'll get attention. And then here's the double hammock I'm trying to make for the boys. I'm almost done with it. It's really big. Um, if I, I don't even know how to hold it up properly, but it, it's much bigger than this one. Um, all I need to do is sew two of the corners, you know, to there and then it'll be done and ready to be hung up in the cage. Ooh. Hello. So when I made this, um, the cage size is 60 by 80 centimeters. And um, the material was like cut and, cause when we bought it from the shop, it was obviously cut. And um, it was kind of like, what am I saying? 70 centimeters from the one side and then like I think two meters the other way yeah I'd say it was like 70 centimeters by 200 centimeters um, so then I didn't really cut any length from the 70 centimeter side even though I know it only needs to be 60 centimeters I just kept that extra you know as the like seam allowance and stuff and I mean, I did cut away some of it because um, like a 10 centimeter seam allowance is huge. I actually, um, I actually kept it more about five centimeters seam allowance and that worked out like perfectly for me. Um, but yes, my sewing isn't great. Like there you can see there was a little mix up and here's where I hand sewed 
the last bit closed um, and there's also a little fold in the sewing I'm really not great I would much rather like pay to have um, them made for me and then I can also support you know someone who's like small business it is to make pet bedding but um, I did decide just to do this quickly for myself and it didn't it didn't it, it's not too bad <laughs> it's it's not too bad but yeah normally I would prefer to um, support a small business that makes pet bedding and there's just what the liner looks like from a distance and I know I probably said in the past like if I ever make liners again I'll film it for you and then I just didn't so um, I can, I'm going to explain now how I did it. I'm sorry if you would have preferred me filming it. I, I thought about doing it and then I don't know, I just didn't. Um, it is technically really simple though, so I'll just explain to you what I did. So you're going to need your two layers of fleece and then if you want to put like a lining in the middle, you can get like a waterproof lining. Um, you can use even just a towel and toweling or you can use like a mattress protector um, and put that inside so you'll need those three layers in whatever size you need for your cage with some seam allowance and then you'll put the two right sides together so this is now the right side and that's obviously now the right side so they would have been facing each other and then you would put the lining like as <laughs> okay now I kind of realize why people would rather film this because I I see now yeah okay I just realized I'll show you <laughs> the inside out sewing thing um, with some other material I mean this is my pillowcase and then this is the extra fabric um, so yes so if we in this case this and this would be the right side of the material so that would be face together and then you'd have your inside lining and then you would sew it like this and then you would take that flip it around and then you would end up like this and then you would see outside inside outside and that's how that works and then I also just sewed like a border um, along the sides just because you know it's very loose the fleece and it I don't I just think it looks cleaner with the borderline I mean not that my borderline is like straight or anything amazing but it, it does give it just a bit of a more refined look um, and helps everything stay together otherwise you know it would all just move and then I had some loose material and I made this or some leftovers so there you can see it was leftovers and then I sewed it together to make another panel of the right size same with this one so this is going to be a double hammock and now this is the bottom but I just put it this way you can so you can kind of see what's going on so there was this square and this square they're the same size and then you just sew this one on like diagonally you just hand sew it look at my atrocious hand sewing there's even a thread I need to cut and a biscuit here to demonstrate how large this is <laughs> a biscuit and it's the same thing with this one I just you know you sew it like inside out and then you turn it the right way and then with these little things it was just um, like thinner strips of fabric and then I sewed it close on the one side and then you turn it inside out and then I just rearranged it so that the what do you call this like the hem it's not the hem I don't know the sewing part is in the middle of the strap you know just rotate it like that and then I put it in the middle and I sewed that in to the hammock because you know that's the top the biscuit hello I wonder if the other boys will um sleep inside here with Binks. I wonder if Binks will like it because he's used to his small double hammock and this is one this one's like twice the size. 
Elio basket. Elio, you can't, you can't sit on here. You can't sit on here. I must say, this double hammock, it seems so simple. But for some reason, it's just, it's just not as simple <laughs> as you would think. And maybe, it's, maybe that's just because I'm not good at sewing. Look how, look how skew my sewing is. My goodness. <laughs> 